hello in this video i'll be talking about the flow volume loops um the flow volume loop basically plots the um air flow on the y axis during the exp during expiration and inspiration um against the lung volume on the x axis um i'll be sharing mnemonics i'll be explaining some of the concepts to you um but before i get started let me tell you about something that used to confuse me um earlier so normally when you plot the x and the y axis the intersection between the two axes is um at zero and then the values increase along the x and y axis so it's like 1 2 3 4 so on and so forth right but on the flow volume loop this is in the case the um smaller number is at the right on on the right side of the x axis so zero will be somewhere around here and then 1 2 3 4 5 8 will be somewhere on the left side i don't know why it is um like this on the flow volume loop but it is what it is and um once you remember this um the flow volume loops are kind of very easy um so normally when you take um a deep breath in um the uh, flow increases during inspiration it's a nice concave shape and um you go from your residual volume to your total lung capacity and once you reach your total lung capacity um you start exhaling so you know the flow during expiration is um increase in the beginning and then it kind of goes down to your residual volume so this is what a normal um flow volume loop looks like it's pretty simple um now let's talk about what happens in diseases so um let's talk about obstructive lung diseases first so in obstructive lung disease there is a problem getting lungs um getting air out of the lungs this is how i remember over obstructive over out so there is air trapping inside the lungs so your tlc and your residual volume will increase now remember that if i want to show an increase in the tlc and residual volume i will have to move the curve towards the left side because the bigger numbers are on the left and not on the right so um the uh, flow volume loop would look like this there is a decrease flow in um both expiration and inspiration but a thing which is very specific to obstructive lung diseases is that there will be a carved out or a scooped out expiratory limb in obstructive lung diseases is very specific for obstructive lung diseases um examples of obstructive lung diseases would be asthma copd emphysema and uh, chronic bronchitis and all of that so um now talk let's talk about restrictive lung diseases um in restrictive lung diseases there's a problem of air getting inside the lungs so um there's a restriction to air flow and that's why the total lung capacity and the residual volume decreases and um the loop shifts towards the right so this is what it would look like it looks like a smaller version of um the normal um flow volume loop nothing special about it no scooped out um and all of that good stuff it's just like a normal a uh, smaller version of the you know um flow volume loop so how do i remember this um my mnemonic is restrictive has an r and in restrictive lung disease the flow volume loop shifts towards the right so that's how i remember it um if you want to re remember um obstructive lung diseases with a mnemonic as well you could use the mnemonic flow volume loop so loop has an l for left and o for obstructive so in obstructive lung diseases the flow volume loop shifts towards the left and in restrictive diseases it shifts towards the right so um this is how you could remember it um let's talk about something more complex um the fact about intrathoracic and extrathoracic obstruction so um let's begin with extrathoracic obstruction um so basically i've drawn it out here i've drawn the airway out here this is the trachea and the bronchus 
these are the lungs and this is the pleural cavity anything above this is the an extra thoracic obstruction and anything inside the pleural cavity would be an intrathoracic obstruction so um, now what happens is that uh, normally when you exhale um, the the pressure in the airways is more than the atmospheric pressure in extrathoracic obstructions right so there will be no collapse of your airways now during inspiration the um, the pressure in your airways decrease with respect to the atmospheric pressure so your airways will collapse and this normally happens during uh, inspiration as well but it is um, assinuated with extra thoracic obstruction so examples of this would be laryngomalacia and tracheomalacia of the extra thoracic trachea or any structural or um, functional abnormalities of the vocal cord so how this would look like on the low volume loop um, so expiration is fine there's no problem in expiration but there would be a flattening or of the inspiratory part of the flow volume loop so this is what it would look like in an extra thoracic um, compression so this is known as variable extra thoracic obstruction um, it is basically because the atmospheric pressure um, is increased compared to the air pressure um, during insp uh, inspiration yeah so now let's talk about intrathoracic obstructions so now in intrathoracic obstructions you are basically not comparing to um, the pressure in the airway you're not comparing it to the atmospheric pressure now you're comparing it to the um, pleural pressure so during inspiration um, the pressure in the airway is greater than the pressure um, uh, in the pleural cavity and so the airways remain patent but during expiration um, the pressure in the airway fall lower than the pressure in the um, pleura and that is why the airways kind of collapse during expiration so what this would look like on the flow volume loop is um, there would be blunting, blunting or flattening of the expiratory uh, limb of the flow volume loop so this would basically be seen in tracheomalacia of the intrathoracic airway, um, bronchogenic cyst, and any tracheal lesions, uh, mostly they are malignant. So this is what it would look like um, in an intrathoracic obstruction. And um, if your fl um, flow volume loop looks like this, like flattening of both the expiratory and inspiratory part of your flow volume limb this would mean that there is a fixed upper airway obstruction um, this is mostly seen in retrosternal goiter where there is this big thyroid gland compressing on um, the airway both during inspiration and expiration it will also be seen in tracheal stenosis um, this is mostly seen during um, prolonged incubation and it will also be seen in laryngeal edema where you know um, maybe like an anaphylaxis would cause laryngeal edema which would cause a fixed airway obstruction so the way i would remember this is pretty simple um, i remember that is ie so in intrathoracic obstructions there is a flattening of the expiratory part of the flow volume loop and vice versa in extrathoracic obstructions there is a flattening of the inspiratory part of the flow volume loop so that makes it pretty easy to remember so to summarize i would say 
that in um, restrictive lung diseases the flow volume loop shifts towards the right in obstructive lung diseases the flow volume loop shifts towards the left um, in extrathoracic obstructions there is a blunting of the inspiratory part of the flow volume loop and in intrathoracic obstructions there is a blunting of the expiratory part of the flow volume loop and if there is um, a fixed obstruction then both the inspiratory and the expiratory part is blunted um, so that's all um, I was having a discussion with my friend and he said you know why do you need mnemonics for all of this information I mean yeah you do understand it so why make mnemonics for it and um, I do agree you kind of uh, if you understand it you don't necessarily need a mnemonic to remember it but then you know during exams um, there's so less time to think about you know flow volume loops and which is increased which is decreased and it's so confusing and mostly time consuming especially in exams so I prefer having mnemonics after I've understood what I need to um, know and then I make mnemonics for it and just makes life easy for me and mostly because I'm so lazy and because I'm very anxious during exams so mnemonics really help me out um, so what do you think what do you guys do do you prefer having mnemonics or would you prefer applying the knowledge that um, you've learned during exams let me know and stay awesome